Well, here we are at the Watford Coliseum, a brand new venue for all of us. Uh, it's a wonderful looking place, I have to tell you, built back in the 30s, been used for all sorts of things. Uh, let's uh, rejoin Rob behind the scenes. Thanks, Jim. Well, it's amazing what you can find out on a backstage tour here. This is to commemorate that all three Lord of the Rings films had their music recorded here. Andy, you're the man in charge here. The reason for that is because randomly you've got the second best set of acoustics in Europe. That's correct. That's what I've been informed. And we had the producer here while it was all being recorded. And plus we have a well-known orchestra's company on a regular basis doing recordings. How did you find out that you were the second best place in Europe to record quality music? Just on general people in the business who talk about us and saying you are the second best venue in the country, or Europe as I should say. Fantastic, well you'll take that. The venue's banged out tonight, it looks great, it obviously sounds great. When did you start getting back into boxing? The last 12 months and the last championship boxing we had here was in 1994 against Robert McCracken and Ubi Andy Till. Fantastic. Well, we've got some great fights coming up here tonight. Thanks very much, Andy. Jamesy, just come with me for a moment. One of the guys we're going to see in action tonight is Tyson Fury. He's five from five, but tonight he looks his opponent in the eye because Scott Balshaw is six foot seven. And this is Tyson's dad, John. John, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, no John, this guy, Scott, says, Jamesy, I'm not sure if you can get in on that. Fury's beatable. Scott says, this is my time, it's going to be a night to remember, Fury's a good technical boxer but he doesn't have my punch, he's beatable, I'm really up for this. Big words. Big words, but it's the same, same scenario, they're all going to say that, aren't they? You know, but at the end of it, Tyson sparred him before and he went nowhere then, and the kid, Tyson was only 17 then, you know, so. But let me tell you, Tyson at the minute is rewriting the script here, with everything. Because people now, at boxer at these stages of the game, they're generally still picking them. This lad's going full throttle and he's going for the juggler every time. Scott Belshaw, four rounds. That's what I say. Now that's your prediction. That's my prediction, but you never know, could go more. And what about a British title shot? We heard it was going to be Chisora against Danny Williams. That's now fallen through. You're so hungry and so is Tyson. You'd take a British title shot tomorrow if you had a chance. Well, let me tell you, that's up to the promoters. It's not me for saying, but I think he's good enough, you know, at this stage of the game. And if, he, if Mick said to me he's boxing the British title tomorrow, I wouldn't be a bit bothered. I'd be saying, OK, let's go for it. I think he can beat him. And I watched other people heavyweights box not uh, long ago, and I, not in Tyson's class. Simple as that. Well, it's certainly more exciting when Tyson's around. Good luck tonight, John. Yeah, thank you. But listen, don't go for a cup of tea. <laughs> I won't. Back to you, Jim. You heard it from the uh, Fury camp men, whatever you do, don't go for a cup of tea. I have to say that all of us here on the Big Fight Live have enjoyed watching the progress of uh, Tyson Fury since he made his debut on this programme in Nottingham uh, just before Christmas, former ABA super heavyweight champion. Uh, as Rob has been saying, five fights, uh, five wins and five knockouts. But tonight he's meeting a big Irishman and they will be eyeball to eyeball. Uh, Fury's 20 now, he improves physically with every fight. They're both uh, over 6'6". Six, six. Scott Belshaw then three years older, 10 wins under his belt, potentially a very dangerous customer. Let's hear from both the heavies. Five from five, but this guy's quite big, quite a challenge for you tonight. Yeah, um, he's around about the same kind of size, a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, but um, uh, good matchup, yeah. Everybody's talking about Tyson Fury at the moment. Why, why are you so up for this and so convinced you're going to do the business? Because I believe that's why I'm here. I believe that's why I've been put here to go out and beat this guy tonight. I've had so many ups and downs the past couple of years. This is your toughest fight so far, isn't it, as a pro? Oh, most definitely, yeah. Scott Belcher was a good test and it's going to be a tough fight. I only heard Monday about the fade off over Tyson. And then once I heard it, I thought, hey, that must be it. That's my chance. I've, got, I've, I've went for it. I'm here tonight. And I'll tell you all the prepared hard so I have. I'm in good shape. So I plan to go out and put on Tyson. You like to create a bit of pressure on yourself, don't you? You like talking it up and, and saying, right, I'm going to knock him out in two, I'm going to go in three, and, and just kind of making a spectacle of it. Well, yeah, um, I think that's what boxing's about, to be honest. It's not just about smacking people in the face. It's about entertaining the crowd and people around watching boxing, and I think it brings interest back to boxing, so that's why I do it, to be honest. I'm off this here. I believe this here is my destiny, and I need to go ahead and do this. And what about a potential British title shot? We heard that Derek Chisora was up for Danny Williams, then it was off. Would you, would you take that fight in a shot if it came your way? Yeah, drop off. And I'd, I'd take any fight, me, because that's what I do in my fighting person. So, I don't know, if I got the opportunity, then I would, yeah, definitely. He would take anyone. He has taken care 
of everyone uh, so far. We've uh, heard brave opponents uh, since Christmas saying what they're going to do, and none of them have managed it. Uh, yeah. Will the Irishman Belshaw prove the exception to the rule, Barry? Well, he's got seven stoppages. He's a powerful guy. He's tall. He's looking him straight in the eye. We'd like to see Tyson have someone fire back at him with a bit of authority and a bit of class. Whether this guy's got it or not remains to be seen. They'll all talk a good fight, but when they when they walk into the ring, that's when it sinks in. And uh, a lot he has an intimidating effect on this guy, a bit like the real Tyson. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a five fights, five, five stoppages. He's an exceptional kid, very quick hands. That's what sets him apart from all these other guys. He's naturally talented. He's got great coordination and he's got fast hands. Doesn't punch really explosively, but he hits the target perfectly. Good technique and with you know 18 stone, that's all you need. Sure. So I I, th I think this guy the realization will set in as he walks to the ring I don't think he'll get past four rounds just like his dad uh, ok so but it's great that there is a big big fellow absolutely. in there and, and you know as opposed to the last fight uh, yeah. against Ellis that lasted barely a round and yeah. looked a total mismatch from the moment they came into the arena it was a facile workout the guy I don't think he. It, it's almost like he offered his chin um, and uh, you know look at this right hand here bang on the head and down he went so it was as I say a facile night's work for, for Tyson you know he will want to have He's been in America. He's been in, in Europe sparring. He's with, been with, sparring with giants, yes, giants, sparring big apparently. strong guys, <laughs> and he's been sparring over there and getting good rounds under his belt again. Good quality opposition. So that's what he needs. He needs good quality sparring. He needs a fight, a competitive fight, where he's going to be digging deep and finding how good he is in late rounds and guys coming back at him. So um, that's what we need to see tonight. I don't think we'll see it. I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll go beyond four rounds and I think okay. he'll dominate. Okay. But it'll be interesting to see, and I hope this guy can throw something back. Well, I was very impressed uh, with Belcher at the way, and he, he looked up for it. He, he looked fit as well. He yeah. should have had a fight in Belfast last weekend that, uh, right. well, that he was is in called good condition, off. Yeah. He looked very, very much up for the job. But just about every one of uh, Fury's opponents uh, uh, have, have talked the talk, and there he is looking very calm indeed and being blown away in the ring. Well, who knows? Is Scott Belcher the man who can calm the Fury? Let's get back to your MC, Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, right now at this time, let's welcome to the ring from Lisburn, Northern Ireland, Scott Belshaw. Belshaw was bitterly disappointed not to take a place on the Odyssey Arena bill recently. Couldn't find an opponent for him there, now he gets a big opportunity. Following his trainers, Alan and Sam Wilton, into the ring. And Scott tells me he stands six foot seven and a half. He can punch, no question about it. Only took this fight on Monday. Had his phone switched off over the weekend. He was so angry at not having had the chance to fight in Belfast. And then when he switched it back on, there was the message. You've got to fight against Tyson Fury if you want it. And he says he's been in the gym since Christmas. His tactics, he says, to cover up and push Fury back. He says, we've not seen Fury on the back foot and he's not as effective when he is on the back foot. We will see Big Scott Belshaw from Lisbon, Northern Ireland. Is he to be the man? And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the ring from Manchester, Twisted for you. reception from the crowd. There is a special mystique about heavyweights and Tyson Fury just might turn out to be the real deal. Five wins, five knockouts. As Jim and Barry were describing for you, he's been sparring against quality opposition over in Germany. He's targeting the British champion Danny Williams, the Commonwealth champion Sam Sexton. His biggest stands almost six foot nine. 18 stone, four and a half, he's the heavier man by a stone. And he certainly talks a great fight. I think this fella, in a lot of ways, has been a breath of fresh air for the sport in this country. And he says to Derek Chisora, young fella, rising heavyweight from Finchley, if you want that fight, Chisora, get in there, I'll take it tomorrow. Well, it's a, you know, it's a big boast, but um, he backs up his boast. He's a very confident young man, and he's in a, hur a hurry. He will be in a hurry. If you're planning to go out, just wait a little while. Tyson Fury against Scott Belshaw coming up. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues with the big boys of boxing. Eight rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing to you first to my left in the blue corner, he's wearing black trunks with white trim and weighed in at 17 stone, four and a half pounds. Coming to us from Lisburn, Northern Ireland, he brings with him a professional record of 10 wins, just one defeat, with seven of his 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Scott Bilshaw. And his opponent fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing multicolored trunks and weighed in at 18 stone, four and a half pounds. Hailing from Manchester, he was the 2008 ADA Senior Super Heavyweight Champion, and now as a professional, he is undefeated with five wins, and all five wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Tyson Fury. Unleash the Fury. Young Tyson, just 20 Your years old. In charge is Richie Davies. Eight round schedule. Certainly be a big lad when he grows up. Here's the final instructions. Okay, fellas, you both know what I expect of you. Behave yourselves, do as you're told, and above all, defend yourselves at all times. Good luck to you both. Well, Richie Davis is not a particularly small man, and he is dwarfed by these two giants of the ring. I was trying to think if there's ever been two fighters whose combined height is more than these two British fighters who've shared a ring. I suspect there'll be some statistician out there somewhere who will say Second that these down, aren't first the record, round. but it's certainly the two biggest guys that I've seen. Well, it'll be the first time that Fury's been met jab for jab, I'll tell you that. Is Belshaw going to be as good as his word? Is he going to be able to back him up and land his own heavy punches? Product of the East Side Boxing Club. Been boxing since he was 16. And also tried his hand at rugby. No surprises that he was a second row. That's a fantastic jab by Tyson. Absolutely fantastic jab. Straight down the pipe. Plenty of power behind it. It's what comes off of the jab to me, for Fury. Got to put the, ha the right hand straight behind it. If he can catch this guy with that jab this easily, so early in the fight, you know the right hand can land. The skeptics, of course, are saying, has Fury really got the knockout punch? Well, Lee Swaby, who he fought in his last fight, he was a, he's a tough man, to put it mildly. Big fella from Lincoln, and he said, if you think he's not heavy-handed, think again, he really is. Well, it wouldn't surprise me, he's, he's a big man. Belshaw trying his own sweeping right hand, straight out of per peripheral vision, trying to catch Fury out. Belshaw's one defeat came against Daniel Peretz. The result was reversed in a rematch. And you'll remember, of course, that Fury stopped the Norway-based Russian. And Fury's getting on top in this opening round. It was a good right hand by Fury, but, you know, Belshaw, to his credit, he took it. Took it well. But, you know, the, the other boxers have all sort of fallen over in punches like that. Belshaw, Belshaw's nose already seeping blood. The claret is flowing. And there's only a minute to go. Good right hand from Fury. Belshaw... as though this is going to go eight rounds, Duke. No, he can't go eight rounds. Belshaw's too crude. Too easy to hit right now. Belshaw's got no defence whatsoever. Wide open to the right hands. He's looking to finish it right here and now, Fury. Doesn't need to get overexcited, needs to pick his punches. Belshaw hasn't been able to land anything really meaningful so far. He's been a relatively static target. And Fury able to tee off with his array of punches and a left to the body is the one that put Belshaw down. Big left hook, sweeping punch, thudded into the solar plexus. Well, you know, he's put a lot into his first round, has Fury. 
I'm just starting to blow a little bit there because he's put a lot of effort in. Now the body show on the one. It might be that it's going to be all over here. The bell will sound. Well, he's going to be able to go back to his corner. But if we didn't know before, we now know exactly who has the power. Tyson Fury, not heavy-handed. That's Scott, that's Scott Belshaw. And you know, the body shots again in that round. Two beautiful sweeping kind of left hook body punches. Absolutely second Belshaw. Here comes the first, right behind the elbow. Well, as Jim was saying, Belshaw really, was really up for this when we spoke to him at the weigh-in yesterday. But no answer to shots like that. Well, nobody really has got an answer to a body shot that lands cleanly. But what Belshaw has got to show now is character. Alan Wilson trying to inspire some pride into his charge. But it's a mountain to climb from here. It's an Second out. Round two. Down twice in the opening round, Belshaw. It'll be a 10-7 round to Tyson Fury. Two big body shots. Can Belshaw somehow pull himself back? The pain from those body shots will have lingered. Almost swinging himself off his feet there, Scott Belshaw. Well, you know, if any of these two land with any of these swinging punches, somebody's going down, there's no doubt about it. They've been thrown from the, from the canvas. <laughs> Belshaw will have plenty of people watching back home in Northern Ireland, and he's a proud man. He'll want to show that he's not just here to make up the numbers. He inches his way forward as Belshaw. You know, not really best of good technical skills, but game. Took the shot. Oh, that was a signal. Another signal. And Fury there. It's all over. You know, that was good sportsmanship by Fury. He could have continued the combination, continued throwing the punches. He looked at his opponent, saw that he was hurt, and stopped the onslaught. Good sportsmanship, well, but a good finish. High quality Duke. Tyson Fury capable of fighting better fighters than Scott Belshaw. And that was pretty impressive. No question about it. He didn't take anything too meaningful from Belshaw, coped with everything that the Irishman threw at him. But those body shots, those left hooks were quality. Uh, particularly the last one. And again, I just want to emphasize that point. It was good sportsmanship. Although B Belshaw was getting a lot of punishment, you know, Fury was dishing out a lot of punishment, but he stopped right in the midst of it, and he didn't want to hit his opponent again. First-class performance. There's a lot of tasty fights out there for Tyson Fury, aren't there, on the British scene? And he is sending out a little bit of a shockwave with punches like that. That's where it finished. There won't be too many takers, I don't think. You know, he is a dangerous man. He's a young man. He's got nice arsenal punches. And he's unbeaten still. A handful of fights doesn't make him a British champion, but he's moving in that right direction. Yeah, that was quality as well, the way he stood back. He saw that his opponent was stricken and allowed him to turn away. wonder what uh, Martin Rogan thinks about that one from last week with Sam Sexton. That'd be a good fight, wouldn't it? Rogan against Tyson Fury. Love to see that one, and I'm sure Tyson would be happy to take it. But we have a winner, and it's now six wins out of six. And Tyson Fury, another knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. 52 seconds of round number two. Our referee in charge, Richie Davies, stops the contest due to the fact the blue corner was in no condition to continue. Therefore, your winner, and still undefeated, Tyson Fury! And Sir Scott Belcher, the, blo and the blood still oozing from his nose there, all that confidence blown away by Tyson Fury, gave it his all, but he was well, well short. We'll be talking to Tyson Fury, still unbeaten, still very exciting and enjoying every second of it when you rejoin us in Walford. And Tyson Fury has uh, joined us here at ringside. Uh, uh, congratulations, not, not only on the fight, you actually stepped over the top rope to join us here, no problem at all. Yeah, uh, as I do every single time, it's my <laughs> little signature move now. Oh. And, uh, yeah, I boxed quite well and I've done what I was told in the corner and I got the job done sharpish. Absolutely, when you got in the ring. Listen, a lot of people rang the warning bells for you tonight. Boxing News said, hold on, 
this guy could be a little bit too tasty for him at this stage of his career, and you've made mugs of everybody. Well, to be honest, Tyson Fury rolls on again, doesn't he? I'm the best ever weight in Britain by a mile. Get Derek Chisora in that ring, I'll stop him. Just like I've done to Belshaw. All credit to Belshaw, though. He's the only man in the British Isles who was game enough to step between them ropes with me, so I want to take my hat off to him, and thanks very much for letting him fight me. And um, that's about it, really. And he came towards you, he, he didn't shy away, did he? He, he, he went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, looked you in the eye, and uh, slugged it out with you. Yeah, well, he uh, tried his best. He come for a fight, he was a big game lad, and he had a good record as well. And he uh, can punch Scott Belshaw, because I sparred with him previously, and I know how, how he can box, so... I, um, I knew I had to keep my hands tight around my head in case a big swing cut and caught me, or it might have been the other way around. A lot of the work you've been putting in in Germany against the uh, Ukrainian giants oh, seems yes. to have paid off tonight. Well, thanks very much to the Ukrainian giants, <laughs> because without them, this wouldn't have been made possible, because they're the only ones who sparred me for this fight. I've done a bit of sparring in, um, in Sheffield as well. So thank all my sparring partners and everyone out there who supported me and followed me. Now, I just want you to have a look at the screen. First of all, have a look at the body shots that really uh, ab ab absolutely... Uh, destroyed him but we'll see those we'll see those in a moment there's a moment I want to show you at the end of the fight that will have earned you a lot of friends here you know because you had him going yeah, no, he wasn't in a position to defend himself and you held back yeah I, I saw him go and I could have I could have let it go then probably put his lights out but to be honest it's it's not I know it's a brutal sport but when a man's gone like that I knew he wasn't going to carry on so there's no point in finishing the last shot. Sure. A yeah. lot of people would have, but even Tyson Fury would have. If I thought he was like, going to get up and do something, but I knew he had no chance. But that's a heck of a good gesture, and you are, as you say, in, in some ways, breaking the rules of boxing with that one, aren't you? In that uh, you've got to defend yourself at all times when you're in there. Definitely you have, yeah. And um, what well, can I no, say? No, no, well done for that. Thanks but you your body shots it. tonight were fantastic. They broke him in half. Yeah, definitely. Body shots and the jab was working beautiful as well. He couldn't get out of the way of that jab. And that slip left up body is just a killer. Any other weight in the country takes up the body, they're down. Absolutely. And we saw Derek Chisora last night um, doing a little bit of nibbling on his opponent. And uh, uh, you have no fears at all that you'll be able to take care of Mr Chisora and everybody else. Well, Chisora... Less the time than Belshaw, I'd say, because he's trying to do the Tyson thing with the ear biting, but I'm the real Tyson now, so I'll show him what a Tyson can do to a Chisora, a Del Boy. Listen, we look forward to seeing you in action again very soon. Very well done indeed, Thanks as always. Much. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Jim. Good Thanks stuff. Much. OK.